Papu, how has the milk production been today? Saab, dood khatam ho gaya saab, kyunki pani bhi khatam hai. Pani nahi hai. Don't worry, I have a plan. The year was 1949 and India had just begun its independent era. It had a mammoth task to build the nation up from scratch. The hunger levels in the country were at alarming levels and India's biggest priority at that time was providing its citizens with basic necessities and most importantly providing them nutrition to survive. Now milk was a wonderful source to solve for this but there was a problem. The market was fragmented, the supply chain system was broken and what was devastating was the quality of the milk. The milk available in Bombay was worse than sewage water in London. It was all found out when Britishers living in Bombay started falling severely ill and milk samples were sent to a lab in London for analysis. The young doctor Varghese Kurian, the founder of Amul, broke down as a result of this circumstance, but we'll get to that story in a moment. The early history of Amul served as a potent lesson in the value of innovating with a unique model of solving purpose and profit. My name is Achina Maya and I'll tell you the story of how Amul single-handedly helped India change from being a milk deficit country to the world's largest producer of milk. Let's go back to the year 1950 and the very beginning of Amul. Amul was a startup trying to challenge the monopoly of the British milk factory Paulson and their exploitative and predatory farmer practices. The Paulson Corporation began to make a lot more money, but the earnings of Paulson were not making its way to the dairy farmers. Farmers were required to sell milk to the contractors at a set price which was extremely low, making these farmers more and more dissatisfied and angry. And this is what brings us to the heroes of this story, Dr. Kurian, Tribhuvan Das, Kishibai, Patel and Harichand Mega Dalaya. Using their brand, farmers and technology, Dr. Kurian Patel and Dalaya sparked a new cooperative movement that gave rise to the Anand Milk Union Limited or Amul. While Patel was responsible for getting all the farmers to cooperate with each other, Mr. Dalaya played an important role in setting up the technical expertise of Amul. In fact, one of Dalaya's most notable contributions was helping develop a technology which would convert buffalo milk into skimmed milk powder. Dr. Kurian had a straightforward plan for the program. Kurian wanted to provide centralized marketing and quality control facilities to thousands of small dairy farmers. His cooperative helped farmers in obtaining a fair price for their milk as well as a consistent market for it. Furthermore, he ensured that the cooperatives also have a share in the company's profit at the end of the year. He had no idea that this would make him the milkman of India. Who do you think you are, Karin? You think you can unite all the farmers of India? You think you can build infrastructure for all of the India? You think you can do mass marketing for India? Who do you think you are? Sir. I'm just a milkman. Even today, Amul milk farmers and producers get close to 80% of the consumer price, which is around 12,000 crores in cash to dairy farmers who supply raw milk. There's no other equivalent to this model anywhere in the world. The White Revolution Initiative, which was launched in 1969, established Amul as a model that was replicated throughout the nation to produce success. The model, later referred to as the Anand pattern, would function on three levels. It starts at the grassroots village society level, where milk is procured. There are milk collection centers where farmers go and deposit their produce and get a payment right then and there. Some of the milk is distributed right there and remaining is taken to district union where 
it is processed and labeled. Now, it is safe to say that Amul's White Revolution was a successful and powerful program as it increased the amount of milk accessible per person and elevated dairy farming as nation's top source of self-sustaining rural employment. There were 98 million cows and buffaloes in about 70 million Indian households. The bulk of milk producers only had one or two dairy animals and the milk produced by these modest producers made up over 70% of the total milk produced. In fact, milk accounted for an average of 22.5% of rural households' income in India. All this was achieved not merely by mass production, but by production by the masses. Finally, I have MBA. Now, I will open my factory and I will become Elon Musk. Even though Amul was made public in 1966, one of the oldest running ad concepts in the world, the Amul mascot, continues to feature on companies' humorous advertising even after 53 years later. In 1966, Dr. Varghese Kurian realized they needed something symbolic for Amul and reached out to Sylvester Dakuna's agency, the man behind the slogan and the Amul girl, Utterly Butterly Amul. Some people question this tagline because butterly is a grammatical mistake. To which Dr. Kurian responded, It's really insane, but if you believe it, it'll work, go for it. After a few trials, cartoonist Eustache Fernandez created the historic young girl with the red and white polka dot clothing. The mascot was then employed to offer commentary on significant national, international and political events including the emergency in India in 1976, the Hare Krishna movement and even disputes between Palestine and Israel. Amul was on its way to become the taste of India, literally and metaphorically. The mascot was slowly becoming an avid part of Indian history. Over the years, national and international figures have appeared on billboards along a one-liner and the Amul girl. She was also entered into the Guinness Book of World Records to be the world's longest running outdoor advertising campaign. Guys, have you seen the butter? The advertisements showed a special ability to take a controversial subject and turn them into satire. By the early 2000s, consumer preferences were changing and Amul had to keep up with the changing times. It entered into various new categories like paneer, cheese, ice cream. Amul had access to a vast distribution network, so it would test new products leveraging its distribution to check which products would perform and ultimately turn them into cash cows. Even though Amul was innovating, adding new products, all was not well. Its revenues were dipping. There were political overtones and a lot of conflict. Amul was not just a milk startup but a brand of national importance and everyone was trying to get a share of the pie. In 2006, Kurian was the one who had to face the repercussions and take the fall and step down. 50 years after founding Amul, politician R.S. Sodhi replaced him, a person who came and rebalanced Amul's ship. To boost earnings, Mr. Sodhi reimagined Amul's strategy and decided to take Amul to the world. The company started to target millions of non resident Indians to fuel its growth. In order to meet the demand for ghee from international audience, Amul also teamed up with Amazon in 2016. Amul's portfolio includes two different types of products for export due to supply chain limitations. The first category is packaged goods, mostly for the Indian diaspora, like your Amul butter, Amul Amul cheese and Amul ghee. The second category includes goods like white butter and milk powder. 
You see, exporting goods is dependent on market pricing, and in some situations, it is not economically feasible for products like milk because of price instability and additional expenses. So, to combat this, Amul started establishing production facilities outside of India in order to expand the business internationally. By 2016, exports had accelerated to 250 crores. Looking back from 2010 to 2015. Amul exploded growing 2.5 times from 8000 crores to 20000 crores it was the fastest it grew in its full history and today it has a turnover of whopping 61000 crores relentlessly maintaining the brand consistency has been part of amul's playbook since the 1960s and is also one of the reasons for amul's spectacular success today Amul sponsor monster and today's sponsors are Coding Invaders. Coding Invaders is the safest and the most trusted platform that guarantees job placement and switching into a career to get into tech or IT. People think that for getting into a high-paying IT field like data analyst, they need coding background, but all you need is basic skills and right knowledge. Their courses are designed for all levels, so even if you don't know the C of coding, you can still learn. Their modules, case studies, and assignments are job-oriented and are designed by industrial experts from companies like Philips, Amazon, and Z. TV. Twenty thousand plus candidates have already transformed their career with their help within six point five months, with an average package of ten to twenty five lakhs, as they have over three hundred hiring partners. Their current placement stats are ninety three percent. The best part is, before you enroll for the course, they provide a guaranteed job agreement with money back guarantee. So go check out Coding Invaders. Link is in the description, and use code AVTV thirty to get a thirty percent. In job guarantee patch. Now back to the video. In 2020, when the lockdown was announced, businesses all over the world took a huge hit. Shockwaves were sent up and down all kinds of industries, and dairy industry was not an exception. The impact cost the milk producers of India a staggering 112 crores a day. Despite all the problems, Amul came out as a defending champion. In the middle of all the chaos where all other dairy businesses were closing shops, Amul not only minimized their losses but made 39,200 crores amidst the lockdown. The whole and sole reason for this is the visionary Dr. Rupinder Sodhi, the managing director of Amul. Under his reign, the company not only increased its revenue by 698 crores in the middle of a pandemic, but also introduced 33 new products, procured 35 lakh liters more milk every day, and gave the milk producers 800 crores extra in just one year. Despite milk being categorized as an essential food product, it saw more than 20% drop in demand when restaurants and catering services shut down during the pandemic. Amul also saw a loss of about 10 to 15% during this time, but these three things that Dr. Sodhi did flipped the game for not just the company but its farmers, laborers and drivers. Firstly, he understood consumer behavior and managed the business based on his insight. Where all the other companies were preparing for loss in demand and cut down on production, Amul realized that hey, Milk and milk products are still primary ingredients of Indian households. In no time, the demand for processed milk not only got back to its baseline but increased when people started cooking at home. And at this time, Amul was still working at full capacity and became the go-to brand when other companies ran out of stock. The second thing was his very well thought out partnership with IBM and the complete digital supply chain management and tracking system. that they built just like how zomato tells us exactly where our food is this system told the mool exactly how and where the resources are working throughout the country which helped in optimizing the corner of the supply chain lastly because so much profit was flowing in as a result of the optimization of resources amul was able to keep the morale high in difficult times through employee incentives like cash food accommodation arrangements and a sanitary environment for the employees to work in while other companies fired employees to cut their costs amul rescued them by giving them jobs and giving them better benefits aaj raat 12 संपूर्ण लॉकडाउन होने जा रहा है ए, घर पे कुछ खाने के लिए है नहीं कौन जाएगा बाहर लाने स्टोन पेपर सीजर मेहमान 
niederzückt hat. A few moments later. सुनो अमूल की मार्केटिंग भी अटरली पटरली थी सट्टार के साथ हमने आई बॉस जेब में सबके डाली थी गेनेस वर्ल्ड बुक रिकॉर्ड से की लिस्ट तोड़ी जा रही थी जेब पे सोस के साथ अब बात ही नहीं होती गिनती हमारी भी Ooh, the taste of India. <laughs>